Hi everyone, my name is Andrew from Custom Kits, and I wanted to share this video with you all today. I recently received the Army Painter Speed Paint Starter Set 2.0, and figured this would be a great chance to share my thoughts on it. If someone is watching this who is on the fence about purchasing these paints, this video is for you. For some quick background on myself, I began this hobby in 2020, and have been working with minis since then. I began painting larger model kits in about 2017, but found minis to be a delightful and addicting challenge. It's been history ever since. I first began by choosing miniatures to paint. One I will paint traditionally with acrylic paints, and the other I will paint with the Army Painter Speed Paint. I want to see what the difference is between these two paint lines, and if there is a drastic improvement in quality when using Speed Paint. These two minis are from the New Kingdom of Egypt, from the Kadesh, Armies of the Ancient Near East set, from Red Copper Miniatures. If you like history and painting miniatures, I highly suggest you check out this set from Red Copper Miniatures. The miniatures are impressive with respect to their historic accuracy and 3D printing quality. I just put these models in Chaitu box, added my own supports, and printed them out. I had no issues whatsoever. But before we paint, we prime. Priming just gives a good base layer that our paint can stick to. Without priming, your mini may come out looking a bit worse for wear. You can prime with any paint, really. It could be from the hardware store, basic acrylic paint, or a specialty brush-on or airbrush primer. For me, I begin with the Army Painter's brush-on primer. I love this stuff. A few drops with just a splash of water from my brush does wonders. All the crevices are filled, and the primer spreads evenly. I will prep the other miniature using the slap chop method. Slap chop was basically designed for using speed paints or contrast paints. I know it's a funny name, but it means business. You start with a black primer, and then dry brush progressively lighter colors, until you get the general color scheme that you want. The key here is to keep areas that will be in shadow darker than the areas that will be lighted. Sometimes a Xenophil highlight or a quick white spray primer from above can help identify those lighter areas. Now you don't have to use Slap Chop for speed paint, but I wanted to check it out. Once you finish priming, you can start painting. Now I am eager to start painting, but I have no idea how the speed paint will look on my mini. I should test these paints out first. I'll test them on these two misprints. Now this is just an exercise to see how the paint will react and behave on a mini. I'm not too worried about my painting quality at this point. Now when using speed paint, I followed the manual instructions and I quote, load your brush with a liberal amount of speed paint and apply a generous coat over the desired areas, allowing the paint to flow into the recesses. I'll touch on this later. Before I get into painting, I want to make three things known. Number one, I am not sponsored by the Army Painter. I did not receive the speed paint set for free from them, nor am I being paid to review these paints. I received these paints as a gift from my wife. This is just my honest opinion of these paints, with no bias, except for that I've always used Army Painter paints since day one of this hobby. Number two, I am no expert. I do this for fun. I work full time and do this hobby when I can. I have seen my improvement though. I came from this oh my goodness! to this. I know I can improve, but can't we all? Part of the fun for me is seeing my improvement with each piece I paint. Three, this is my opinion based on my own experience with speed paint. If you love working with speed paints and mastered them, great. If you tried these speed paints and didn't like them, that's fine too. We're all in this hobby to have fun and see our imaginations come to life. So, if you disagree with my responses and opinions, that's fine. I just ask that you keep it respectful in the comments section. I'm happy to talk about things that were in this video, 
but I will not tolerate any unnecessary rudeness or hostility toward myself or anyone else. We're all at different parts in our mini painting journey, and we're here to have fun. With those out of the way, let's get to it. Grim Black. This had awesome coverage. It went on really smooth and dried just as I expected. You can see how the raised areas are much lighter than the deeper ones. This could be even more exaggerated if I had some lighter colors on those raised areas. Satchel Browns next up. This had really good coverage. It left the raised areas a bit lighter for some highlighting to do later, possibly. This would be good for wood, robes, blades. The list just goes on. Broadsword Silver. It had some of the best coverage, but the effect to me was just not metallic. The normal metallic line from the Army Painter seemed much better. The result here looks flat and a bit just like gray colored plastic to me. Pallid Bone. Out of the bottle, it seemed that this was very transparent, which it was. I thought there was no pigment when I first put it in the paint well. In the areas like the rib cage on this misprint, it seemed to work against itself. On the femur and the tibia, it looks amazing. Now this was probably user error with this color, but I will definitely try it again. When using this color, I might suggest using a small amount and layering it up if needed. I know these paints are supposed to get into crevices, but Pallid Bone was just too runny for me. Purple Swarm. I think I just found my new favorite paint. I love the intensity of the purple, and it dried just as I expected. It looks amazing on this cloth. It had very good coverage, and I think this color would look best on a mage's robe or maybe a king's cape. Beowulf Blue. This had about the same coverage as Purple Swarm, and it dried a bit desaturated. The color is almost an exact match to Ultramarine Blue. It's not bad at all, but I think we'd need to use it on more textured areas to really see what happens. Orc Skin. This was a very intense green with really good coverage. It works well in rounded or natural looking areas from my experience. It worked best on the Marine's helmet, but not so good on the shoulder. I envision this would look best on skin, fatigues, or maybe cloth, but I don't think I would use it on a flat area. Slaughter Red. Now this is an intense red. It does a good job, but don't forget how deep and rich that red is. I would use this very sparingly. I could see this red being used as paint on metal, or maybe even just a red robe. Zealot Yellow. This had pretty good coverage, but the effect was a bit underwhelming to me. I think this was my least favorite color of the whole bunch. This paint looks more orange than yellow, and it pooled way too much. I would use this on a flat surface, but not a rounded one. For me, I think I would use this as either hair or maybe even a zombie skin tone. Peachy Flesh. The coverage of this paint appeared to be the worst at first, but once it dried, I was mistaken. The result looks a lot like Caucasian skin. I will definitely use this for my fairer skin figures, and I could see myself mixing this with some brown to make richer skin tones. My overall thoughts are these. The speed paint line has very good potential. However, the instructions saying to apply a generous amount of paint could be a bit misleading. When using Pallid Bone, I applied a lot on the ribs and the pelvis of that misprint, which resulted in a deep pooling effect in areas that I didn't want to be dark. I could have went back and sucked up some paint with a wet brush, but I can see how that pooling could be good on very textured figures. Again, this was just a test on a misprint, so no real damage was done. But I do think for these lighter colors, one should start with a very light amount of paint and layer up as needed. That was my review of these paints. So, let's get started painting for real. I started with the Egyptian who would be speed painted. The speed paint instructions say to use lighter colors first and work toward the darker ones. So that's what I did. I began with Pallid Bone for the fabric, head cover, and the loin cover. 
I used lighter amounts of this color because of my experience with the test painting, and I think it came out really nice. For the skin, I used a mix of satchel brown and peachy skin. I want these soldiers to look historically accurate, so I tried my best to make an olive to rich skin tone. Although the skin came out a bit darker than I was hoping for, I know why that happened. It's because my gray was not spray out enough on the dry brushing, so the figure appeared to be darker than it was going to be. So to fix this, I would just add more gray next time. But it's not a problem. This was all practice. Now, Egypt had a huge province in its prime, which was during the New Kingdom era, which were the 18th to 20th dynasties. With this large range, the people who were working as the foot soldiers, the infantry, they likely comprised of people from different regions in northern to central Africa. Some pharaohs even enlisted archers from Nubia to work for them because they were known to be the best bowmen in that time period. As such, any skin tone from olive to very rich would be historically accurate for these minis. For the leather chest piece, the scimitar, and the rim of the shield, I just used some satchel brown. On the front of the shield, I used a mix of satchel brown and zealot yellow to make a bronze-ish color. For the bashing knob, that shape on the front, I used a small amount of zealot yellow. Once this dries, I'll come back and touch up details like the eyes and add any lighter colors if needed. For the other mini, I used leather brown as the base for the skin, then used monster brown for the lighter areas. I then mixed just a smidge of mummy robes with monster brown for the final highlights. I made sure to come back with leather brown for the lips and other darkened areas that I may have missed. There are two general ways to paint skin tones. One, you begin with the darkest color and work your way up to the lighter colors. Or two, you start with the medium tone, apply a dark wash, come back with that medium tone, and then finish with the lightest color for any minimal raised areas. For the head and loin covers, I used a two to one mix of tanned flesh and lava orange. I saw some reference pictures where they had orange fabric and I thought it looked pretty cool. I mixed mummy robes with that mixture to highlight those raised areas on the cloth. For the chest piece, I used oak brown with leather brown highlights. For the wood parts of the shield, I used fur brown followed by a dark tone to really bring out the wood grains. For the scimitar and the bashing knob, I used a successive mix of oak brown, orange, and moon dust to achieve my attempt at non-metallic metal. Full disclosure, I'm still learning how to do this, and I think we all are. That's what I love about this hobby. We're always learning, and that's great. Here are the final results, side by side. In my opinion, the Speed Paint Mini looks much more rugged and stylized, whereas the traditional Mini has a bit more realism to it. But I am happy with them both. I got some practice in, and I learned how to use Speed Paints. Next time, I'd be more generous with the gray dry brushing to get a more even spread of color before I put on the speed paints. But I don't think this was a bad attempt at all. My final thoughts are these. I think the speed paints are really cool. They have some very interesting properties. They're like a wash mixed with an acrylic. Watching them dry was pretty interesting, as I saw the raised areas becoming lighter before my very eyes. If you throw in some creative shading, or maybe some other colors for the slap chop method, you could have a really interesting result. Just remember, the speed paint does a lot of the work for you, but it will react based on how you prep the mini. If you keep the areas dark, you'll have darker colors. If you keep the areas light, you'll have lighter colors. Alternatively, you could just prime the mini in one whole color, like white or pale gray, like the speed paint manual shows, and let the pooling of the speed paint darken the colors for you. Or maybe just start with the black primer, use a quick Xenothal highlight, and see what happens. Regardless of how easy Slap Chop seems, it apparently takes practice. Which of these two is your favorite? I like the traditional mini better, but that's not to say that the speed paint one is bad. I just didn't dry brush it well enough. Let me know in the comments section if you prefer to paint minis with acrylics or speed paints, and why.
I'd love to hear from you. If you have any tips, let me know those too. I'm always happy to learn. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and maybe jingle that bell. Thanks for watching. Until next time, friends. Remember, practice makes progress, and you are improving with every mini that you paint.